In experiment two, you will be determining the percent purity of one of two metal samples and determining the percent composition of an unknown alloy sample. For this experiment, you will need the following pieces of equipment. An L-bar and a clamp, a burette holder or a burette clamp, a 1 liter or 600 milliliter beaker, a wash bottle containing distilled water, a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder, a udiometer tube or a gas burette, a sample holder and a vial, some sandpaper your metal sample and a sample of the alloy. The alloy is an unknown and will be labeled with a specific number. You must make sure you note down the unknown number of your alloy sample. To begin this experiment, take a piece of weighing paper and crease it in half diagonally Open it and crease it the opposite way again. The metal samples have been pre-weighed already to be within the right weight range. Obtain one strip of the pure metal and close the vial. You may use the sandpaper to gently clean the metal sample. Try to hold it using a piece of brown paper so as to avoid getting any fingerprints or grease on the sample once you have used the sandpaper on to clean it. Once you have cleaned the sample with sandpaper, gently use the brown paper to remove any traces of metal shavings that may remain on the metal sample and place it on the weighing paper. You may now proceed to the balance room to determine the exact mass of your metal sample. Bring your sample of previously sanded and cleaned pure metal to the balance room on a piece of wax paper. Turn the balance on and obtain another piece of weighing paper. Fold it in half at a diagonal and opening it, fold it again crosswise in order to obtain a crease in the center. Place this paper on the balance, close the door and tear the paper. Your balance should read zero. Open the balance door and transfer the metal from the weighing paper in your hand to the weighing paper in the balance. Close the door and note the exact mass of the pure metal. Once you have noted its mass, remove the paper containing the metal off the balance, close the balance door, and turn the balance off. Discard the other piece of paper in the garbage can. You may return to your bench. Next, you need to determine the volume at the base of the udiometer tube. This volume is uncalibrated and you will calibrate it in the following way. Measure between 3 and 5 milliliters of distilled water using a graduated cylinder. It doesn't matter exactly what the volume is, as long as you know the volume exactly. Bear in mind that you can read a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder to two digits after the decimal. Once you have determined the volume of water in the graduated cylinder, transfer it carefully and quantitatively to the udiometer tube. Now note the volume of water in 
the udiometer tube. The number you read will be smaller than the volume you read in the graduated cylinder. Please note that the udiometer tube can be read to two digits after the decimal place. Once you have read the volume of water in the udiometer tube precisely, you may empty the water from the udiometer tube and you should repeat this measurement a second time. In order to prepare the rest of your apparatus, take a burette clamp which can be located on either side of every sink in one of the cupboards and attach it to an L bar that has been fastened to the stand on your bench. Take a, a 600 milliliter beaker filled with regular cold water and fill to two-thirds level a one liter beaker. If you are doing two experiments simultaneously, you may need to use a one liter beaker and a 600 milliliter beaker. Use a 50 milliliter graduated cylinder to obtain approximately 10 milliliters of concentrated 12 molar HCl from the pump. If the pump has a cap on it, be sure to remove the cap before using the pump. Pull the pump up and just allow the liquid to flow out. Come back to your desk and measure the volume of the acid using a graduated cylinder. Take your sample of metal that has previously been weighed, transfer it to the sample holder, if possible, without touching it. Put the sample holder in the vial and place the vial, sample holder and sample gently into the beaker, one liter beaker containing water. Make sure the sample does not come out of the sample holder and make sure that the entire assembly, the sample holder and the vial, are full of water and that there are no air bubbles present. Next, take the acid that was in the beaker and transfer it to your 10 milliliter graduated cylinder, carefully without getting it on your fingers. Remember, anytime you work with acid, you must be wearing your safety glasses. Be careful not to inhale the fumes of the acid. Hydrochloric acid is called a fuming acid because the vapors are trying to get out of the acid and it's extremely important not to inhale those vapors as they are extremely corrosive. Carefully transfer the acid into the udiometer tube. Again, take care not to allow the acid to drip outside of the udiometer and onto your fingers. Note that the exact volume of the acid is not important and I'll ask you to think about why. Next, use the wash bottle to, to fill the rest of the udiometer tube with water. If you have a tip attached to your wash bottle, make sure to remove it before you start working. Incline the tube to 45 degrees and carefully add the distilled water along the edge of the udiometer tube to ensure that you get as little disturbance as possible of the surface between the acid and the water. Once you've added three to four milliliters of water, you can straighten up the tube and continue filling it with water until you have a bubble of water on the surface of the udiometer tube. Carefully place your thumb on the bubble and quickly invert. Make sure not to remove your thumb until the mouth of the udiometer is underneath the surface of the water. Once it is, you can remove your thumb and you want to place the surface or the mouth of the udiometer tube on top of the sample holder but inside the vial. 
make sure that the bottom or the tip of the udiometer tube does not sit on the bottom of the beaker, but is about one centimeter above, and attach it securely using the burette clamp. If you watch carefully, you can see the acid swirling down the tube. You must be continually watching because when the acid comes into contact with the metal, you'll see hydrogen begin to be produced and the metal will rise. Gently tap the tube to ensure that the metal stays in contact with the acid water. If the metal sticks to the glass, you will have to repeat the experiment. Continue tapping until all the metal has reacted. The next few steps are crucial to the completion of this experiment. Make sure to measure the volume of the hydrogen gas that has been collected. You can do this by reading the volume directly from the udiometer tube. The next measurement that you must take is the height of the water column. The height of the water column is measured from the height of the water in the beaker up to the height of the water in the udiometer tube. At this point, you should also measure the temperature of the water. For this, you will be provided with a digital thermometer. Last but not least, before you leave the lab, make sure to note down the values of atmospheric pressure and the room temperature that will be provided to you. Once you have noted all these measurements down, you can carefully remove the udiometer tube from the beaker, allowing the contents to fall back into the beaker. You may then rinse the udiometer tube thoroughly with distilled water and carefully discard the contents of the beaker, making sure not to lose the vial and the sample holder. You must repeat this experiment with the same metal using another sample and then the exact same experiment will be repeated using this time your alloy sample. We ask that you do two trials of the pure metal and two trials of the alloy. Please remember that this experiment, unlike all the others, must be completed in 90 minutes. This is a brief overview of what you will be doing in lab two.